Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Mike Bryant and we are here at uh, another Page One Power webinar. Today we're doing a little demonstration, uh, link building live demonstration and uh, um, I'm excited that you could all join us today. We're broadcasting live from Boise, Idaho and that's the home of the uh, world headquarters of Page One Power and also home of uh, people that play football on Blue AstroTurf. <laughs> that is myself. Uh, um, I'm just going to do the introductions and then get out of the way and let the link builders take over and the experts uh, do what they do best. And um, But I would say please uh, participate in the extended conversation on Twitter, social media using hashtag P1PWebinar. And uh, in the house, we have Colin Eggleston, no stranger to our webinars. We know him very well. He's the director of training. Hello, Colin. Good day, everybody. It's great to be here, and I'm excited to be talking about link building. Also in the house, direct from the production floor, we have a SEO specialist, Hattie James. Hi, Hattie. Morning, everybody. And as a special guest coming from Montreal, Canada, we have Shandal Nolasco da Silva, and she works for AOD Marketing. She's a content and outreach lead there, and she leads outreach teams uh, both English and French. And uh, you may have seen some of her articles as a contributor on Search Engine Journal as well. Hello, Shandal. Hi, everyone. Thanks for attending, and a huge thank you to Page One Power for including me in the webinar this morning. Very happy to have you with us. Um, so today, let's talk about what we are going to do. Uh, we're going to look at three websites that were submitted by our audience members ahead of time. And these are websites that are not uh, affiliated with Page One Power or AOD Marketing. They're not our clients. Um, they're just uh, people that have have uh, SEO and link building in common and, and they want to learn more and uh, they're happy enough to volunteer to use their websites as examples today. So we're going to look at those three. We're going to uh, discover linkable assets within specific content pages on those sites and then discuss and determine some link building strategies for each website. Um, so hopefully everybody will find this information and these examples very actionable and, and applicable to your own work. Um, and speaking of which, we want to get an idea of what our audience, uh, where you guys come from. So take a moment to uh, answer the poll question. You should see that up on your screen now. So if everybody participates, it gives us a really good idea of where the audience is coming from and, and what your role is in, in the work that you do each day. And it also help us speak to um, that type of work once we determine the majority. And we'll give that just a few more seconds and we'll close the poll. Three, two, one. And we'll take a look here. It looks like the majority is working in the agency field. 35% uh, is in-house, and then we've got some freelancers joining us as well. So thanks for that uh, information, everyone. So let's get into this. Um, we're going to go right to our first website, and I'm going to have Colin start us off. We're looking at dbservices.com. Colin, take it away. Thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate it. Um, and I just wanted to uh, have two things uh, off right off the bat here. I just want to say that uh, for anybody that submitted their site that we're going to go over today, um, you know, again, every every piece of feedback um, and and maybe uh, you know and maybe advice and kind of analysis that we give is is given from a place of love uh, and and not not intended in any way to. Um, diminish or to um, belittle or, or insult or, or any, any negative light uh, onto the creators and the purveyors of these websites. This is just merely an opportunity for us to kind of publicly kind of express and kind of analyze um, opportunities 
and kind of show the link building process um, in, in its stages. So that's one thing. Second thing, there's a very important uh, question I see that someone has already <laughs> someone has already a, a put in the question field. I think we I think it needs addressing right now. It's from uh, Scott E. and he says, "Long live the Smurf turf." So, um, so uh, uh, there we go. So <laughs> Bronco, some uh, some BSU uh, pride there. So uh, thank you for that very important uh, comment. Uh, <laughs> so without further ado. Um, let's go ahead and get started and kind of look at and kind of the three of us, uh, obviously the three of us will kind of go through the DB services um, site. Um, let's start, I'll throw it to uh, Canada um, mm -hmm. and uh, and see and what were your what were your thoughts on that kind of uh, first thoughts, uh, Shondell? On the basic structure of the site here. Yeah. Um, I think since this business is built off of existing FileMaker users, it would be great to have an intro on the home page to what FileMaker is. Um, mm. uh, and similarly, like home page links are great for SEO, so having just more linkable assets on the home page would be great to see. Um, I did notice, and this is sort of more of an on-site small issue, but just on the content pages under process, Sort of under each of the H1s, there was a repetitive introduction. So there was a bit of a duplicate content issue there. Um, so definitely encouraged to write unique content on, on each page. Mm -hmm. um, sorry. And then uh, under the project build page, um, I noticed right away there was a link to Wikipedia's definition of the agile development methodology, and I thought, you know what, that's a great opportunity for DB services to explain this concept in depth and then discuss why they use this approach. And then from my point of view, as if I were marketing this site, I could easily write an article like five businesses using the agile development methodology and then create a piece of content that's relevant to their B2B audience. Yeah, that's that's a that's a really great opportunity you identified there. Um, and, and one thing, just kind of from a link builder perspective and from and kind of bleeding into kind of the SEO on-site, you know, technical optimization perspective, I noticed with with uh, DB um, is is that each page, it, especially if you look in the if you look in the um, source code of each, you know, uh, even on the articles pages and a lot of these other pages here, the it's a little bit content light, as in like fewer words. Uh, there's a, there's right. there's kind of a, a, a low uh, a low you know with the with a few exceptions obviously but um, a, a lower number of words on page than I would like to see um, especially for I, I mean I always like to err on the side of like throwing as much content at the crawlers as possible to kind of um, you know to, to kind of help uh, you know get that identification going of the, and identify context identify um, identify elements of the page and then also um, you know, uh, and also for the reader as well to keep someone on the page um, reading, engaging. Um, I don't know, Hattie, what are your, what was your take on, on this site as well? Well, just off the bat, it, you know, it's a clean site. Yes, um, very nice. And it is nice. focused, but it is on, it's too focused. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's very file maker heavy. It's just focused on the one piece of software, which is their niche, obviously, but mm. they need to diversify their content so that link builders can, can add, you know, um, properly write articles regarding um, data, database making, et cetera. You know, if it's just about FileMaker, then there's very little that we can do, especially as writers. You know. Yeah, the the case study when you dive into the content, like the case studies, they're a little bit more um, diversified, um, but you know you have to dig a little deeper to find that, and that's that's the hard part. You know, it should be a little bit more obvious. So. Right, um, and then we're getting some so questions here. So we got someone says uh, go vandals. So I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna <laughs> skip right over that. Um, and so someone's someone's asking so um, someone's asking about the domain authority or the page authority um, for for this. Uh, I'm trying to get our uh, we can we can check 
later on, um, but that's not really, I'm not looking at that yeah. right now, uh, per se, as far as like using that to, to identify linkable assets, but that's a good question. Um, and um, someone uh, someone's asking if they can add their site. Um, if, if we have time, I wouldn't mind taking a look at an extra one if we finish super early, but we may not get to a fourth site today. Um, and then also Jordan G um, is asking, if you put in FileMaker Developer, they have the first link. Uh, and so that's right, as far as, as, far as, rankings, uh, as, far as rankings go, um, you know, I think that there's some, there's some good, uh, they're in a good place, um, which, is, which is great. Um, but I think that as far as making the site, you know, from a link builder's perspective, um, I want to have a, I want to be able to work with a site that um, is rich in, is rich in um, content and rich in linkable assets that I can, um, that I can continue to link to and, and build relationships through. Um, and I think that I know that, uh, and Hattie, I know uh, that this one was kind of an interesting page here for right. Oakland Athletics. As a linkable asset, I just want to call out these case studies are actually pretty phenomenal. Yes. Um, as far as linkable assets go, these are very usable, um, and especially ones that kind of have this overlap. So this is a sports team, has a lot of great overlap with sites that, with watering holes um, that have to do with technology and sports. Data sports, um, all of, you know, the intersection of the two. I actually write a sports and technology column, so I could truly write about this next week, you know, if, it were, if this were my client. So, um, but again, as Colin said, there's not a lot of text on this page. It would need, you know, a little bit more text um, to make it just that much richer as a writer. Um, and then as far as like linkable assets uh, as well, I would also, uh, I was unable to find a, a blog, like an mm -hmm. active, um, you know, an active blog right. um, on the site. And the, a blog, although not necessarily, um, you know, not necessarily, uh, uh, you know, needed per se, but it's a really great, it can be a really great way for people to engage with your company and know, understand your brand and your people. And then also, for us link builders to use to refer back to articles in your blog um, as linkable assets. Like if you were to write a blog article about um, you know a, a study or a, you know some statistic you know st statistical analysis um, of you know the filemaker's impact in certain fields. Um, that's something you know studies you know the empirical studies things like that. Those are linkable gold mines, and so I can link back to those as a link builder all day. Um, and so I think that's something that is an opportunity for um, for this this site. Colin, I think that's uh, those are that's a great idea for uh, for business sector to create case studies that people can apply their FileMaker services to their own life. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with Hattie. Like the the case studies is the strongest content asset at this point. Yeah. But I think overall B two B is always really challenging. But the common theme that speaks to sort of all businesses that are trying to speak to other business owners is that they have to create content that business owners are going to care about. So from the case studies, for sure, Oakland Athletics, you could do running a baseball team like a business, or vice versa. You could do dealing with data overload and saving money, or there was even a pharma company uh, case study talking about how they were able to expand their business internationally using their services. So I think those are all topics that face business owners. But then at the end of the day, a strategy that's worked for me in the past for B2B clients is to have their CEOs to tap into the knowledge that the CEOs um, of the company have and do interviews and create guest content so that the author profile can have a home page link back to DB services, for example. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, and uh, and then I the, uh, have a couple questions rolling in. I want to uh, I want to uh, you know we have to get to the other two sites, so I, I want to address these uh, quickly. Uh, so from Scott E um, asks, uh, so would you offer this Oakland A's article to another site after it was optimized? What I would do 
if I were link, if I were building to it, I would I would refer to this article. I would I would in um, in an, in an article in another article. So I'd write an article about sports and technology and kind of optimizing, um, you know, and how the Oakland A's. I would refer, you know, right. use a uh, basically like a parenthetical reference or like a citation. I'd cite this as a source right. for information on the Oakland A's, or, uh, and and in my article to kind of reinforce a point. Um, that's how I would use it. Exactly, as an example of what was done using this kind of database in an article about like sports and database technology or data collection or data mining, etc. And then use it on like a, a site with which I already have a relationship or one that I've just created a relationship with or, you know, etc. Um, there's a great uh, question from uh, from Anthony uh, Stanad. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, Anthony asks. So Anthony asks. Okay, we've talked about uh, we've talked about linkable assets, but where would you like to see these links coming from? Uh, and own blog articles, submissions to guest posts. Great question because uh, you know if if any of you have listened to my uh, my one hander uh, webinars where I talk about the uh, link building, the link building process, and the basics. Uh, one of the things I always like to talk about is watering holes. Is like where, where, would, what types of sites would we try to acquire links from, um, and where, you know, what, what makes, what makes topical relevance, what makes sense to see links pointing back to a site like this. So real quickly, and then I think we need to move on to the next site. Um, and uh, real quickly, I would say, um, for me, if I was trying to, um, if I was trying to find a, a watering hole that kind of the relevant audience would look for. Um, DB Services is a um, you know this this product, the FileMaker integration, is is kind of more on the B two B side. And so the watering holes I'd look for is where are the decision makers at companies, where what types of sites are they frequenting? So I would say like you know like higher end business type blogs, um, you know blogs that are targeted to um, to C level people or even like you know decision makers within companies, engineers or, or you know that sort of thing, but like a uh, software, you know, uh, people in the, on the software chain of command um, that kind of make these decisions to integrate these products. Uh, I don't know where it all opened up. Where do you guys think? Um, what kind of watering holes? You know, what types of sites would you target? Go ahead, Shondal. I completely agree with what you're saying, Colin. I think you need to get into the heads of the decision makers of the people using DB services and write content on websites that they're already on basically business websites, entrepreneurial websites, uh, best practices. And then I think because, like you said, there is the intersection of technology here, you can start to walk down that path for sure. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Um, and uh, so just kind of moving through, uh, I want to make sure that we have enough time to address all three sites. So we'll, we'll pause on DB services right now, although obviously, I mean, we could probably go a whole hour just on on uh, on this type of site. So, uh, but thank you again. So let's move on to let's move on to this next one to South Park Seafood, um, SouthParkSeafood.com in uh, Portland, Oregon. Um, and uh, so I'll throw to uh, I'll throw to Canada to uh, to see what are your first thoughts on uh, link building and link assets for these guys. So I think. First of all, this restaurant did a really great job of including all of the essential related information on the home page. We can see their hours, there's a reservation widget, we have an introduction to their uh, business that's attractive that makes me want to know about them. Uh, there's a map and then of course there's a lot of visual aids, so there's a balanced approach to the design. Um, and I like that they integrated social media a lot on the home page, like we see their whole Instagram feed. Um, I think the site's internal pages are also really relevant. They get to the point, they give you what you want to know, and there's an attractive layout. Um, the biggest uh, content asset I found for South Park was the sustainability page as well as the blog. Um, so the sustainability page, obviously there's a growing interest globally for environmental concern and sustainable food and fishing products. So I think it would be easy to include a number of eco-conscious angled articles. And then there's some overlap with that on the blog talking about grass-fed cows. But then you could also 
totally take a different angle with some of the other blog pieces featuring high-end food like the chocolate platters. So I think these are all really easy areas to discuss, even on general news websites. Yeah, yeah I agree with that take. Um, and one, actually, uh, a, a couple nitpicks um, for me as a as a consumer, uh, you know, uh, just just kind of experiencing the site, kind of first, uh, you know, my first impressions. I go to SouthParkSeafood.com, and the first thing I see is dead fish. Um, and so I think that that's um, I, I think that that's basically you know it's it's I was actually confused at first as to kind of what type of like do they just you know, they do I just buy do I buy the fish and then cook it myself or you know, what's this dead fish doing what's the context of these two giant dead fish in my face um, and so and so as a you know as a as you know as a consumer we eat with our eyes right. So, you know, for, for someone that watches a lot of Food Network, um, uh, lot, lots of Food Network, um, this is not something I would on my, I wouldn't put this on my menu. I wouldn't put this, I wouldn't put dead fish picture um, like over the door of my restaurant. And then if you go to the sustainability page, again, we have the same thing where it's like, okay, we have this dead iced fish. I, we're, it's not a sushi restaurant. It's not a, you know, I, the, the context is off for me. And it's actually it, it's uh, it's a little bit unappetizing. So that's a little nitpick, and we can change those you know change those pictures can be changed out ridiculously fast. So you know from that perspective, you know as a consumer, that's something that I would probably advise to you know for just an experience level, um, use UX. I would I would change um, for linkable assets. I love the that there's a VR integration. Yes. That there's VR integration here. I think this is very linkable because. In an article, like a guest post type article, or even even on like a resource um, type of uh, link for Sewell, um, you can you can put this under like a heading of like restaurants that offer VR uh, you know VR tours Preview. or previews, things like that, in, in local directories or local um, you know local websites that talk about like um, integrating technology with small business, small and medium businesses, and with restaurants. Um, yeah, VR is tech is marketing. huge marketing so that's incredible really really great sustainability you can link to sustainability type content till till the, till the cows come home or till the fish till the fish thaws out um, from, from that's on ice so so there's that um, this is a gorgeous website there's a lot of good content the blog was a little sparse I would like to see more articles there's the four or five here which are beautiful. And great, there's like the visuals are spectacular. It, absolutely, but I'd like to see more. It's a little, it's a little self-promotional. It's a little self-referential. Uh, um, so I'd like to see maybe some um, like practical tips that you can that you can do at home, um, and you know, and, and kind of, or maybe maybe some more. Um, the sustainability angle is great. Like this is beautiful. This is really linkable. Talking about the food and and things. farm to table. Um, as far as external links, no, they're kind of light on the external yeah, links too. No, they need the links. So that could be that's that could be a bit of like on technical SEO mm -hmm. advice. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of bogarting this one, but uh, Hattie, what are your what are your takes? <laughs> um, I basically Shandal took the words right out of my mouth um, with her her assessment of it. The and and I actually with the fish at the, <laughs> on the front page. I just was like, oh look. Seafood. I'm hungry now. It's perfect. Um, I I think this is a, a great one. It's very niche, obviously, since it's a seafood restaurant. Um, but uh, there's a a lot that you can do, especially with like like you said, Colin, the VR uh, video, the marketing angle. Um, the blog is a little bit on the sparse side. Um, but the visuals are great. You can use like the chocolate. Um, posts to talk about like party planning, you mm -hmm. know, as a linkable asset, um, and uh, you know, there's there's a lot to work with here, especially for such a niche site. So. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a great there's a great question here. Um, let's see. Let's go to okay. So. Uh, uh, so, uh, Bradich F talks about do local restaurant do local residents visit a restaurant website for information or just to learn about the restaurant, or should this content be added strictly for SEO purposes and not really for the user? Great question. This is actually a question we get a lot from our clients, and I'll just address this quickly. 
um, here. So for the, the, the content, for a good business that you want to kind of build that groundswell, that kind of grassroots momentum um, of visitors and returning visitors, um, I, every restaurant, I recommend every restaurant, local business, dentist office even, should have um, robust ongoing content that's always updated for their audience and for their um, patrons. Um, yes. And I would also say, I would also say quickly that um, I would also never advocate um, content just for SEO purposes only. I, I'm more interested in the end user and the user experience and people enjoying the site and, pe and patrons discovering interesting things about my clients and, and, and their, you know, what they have to offer than any of the SEO ranking factors. Although it is, we do want to make content with, you know, with those SEO factors in mind and kind of optimize to that. Um, but it's, for me, it's, it's experience first SEO, uh, you know, SEO factors are, are a, a different thing to consider. Definitely. And then just, just to add to that, one definitely helps the other. The more relevant you are and the more click-throughs you're getting and the lower your bounce rate is because your content is relevant to people looking for restaurants, that is going to help your SEO too, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I also just wanted to add one yeah. other strategy if I can. Um, I think what would be really cool for South Park Seafood to do that I would definitely do if I was running a campaign is do a whole influencer-based campaign for food bloggers challenging each to test a recipe using fresh and sustainable seafood and to write about their experience on the blog saying, you know, South Park Seafood challenged me to do this, yada, yada, yada. Here's my recipe. Here's how it went. Now I'm going to use fresh oysters from now on or something like that, you know? I think that's incredible. That's and the, idea. the influencers, reaching out to the influencers is so, uh, it, I think it's, I think it's kind of one. Um, I think it's one of the things that's going to 2017 is going to be a game changer to keep that in mind and look at influencers as social media, Twitter, Facebook, every you know, Instagram as as social media platforms are more and more deeply um, entrenched in our everyday life and our interactions with brands. Um, then that's then finding those influencers. Those influencers are basically like the new mayors. Uh, you know, they're like, they're basically, you know, people that you really want to kind of have uh, on, you know, in, in your good graces. <laughs> yeah, they're your yeah. spokespeople. So, um, so it, it's great to reach out to those. So I just did a quick search here. So yeah, another opportunity, um, so another opportunity for link building. So we talked about guest posting. So, um, so Don S, um, when, so he has a question, a, a clarification question that I'd like to address. It says, so. Uh, link to means create an article uh, to go on someone else's site to get you know to get published and then link back to yourself from within that article is guest posting the primary tactic. Don, that's exactly right. That's one of the tactics. That's kind of like a that's a, a, a very popular go-to one right now. Um, and so when we're talking about linkable assets and kind of referring to linking to things in an article, that's exactly what we're talking about. The second thing, um, and, and then and then what Shondell just references talking about influencers and kind of having them create content and link back to you so it's the influencer created uh, area there um, and there's a third tactic that I is one of my favorite tactics that I just pulled up here in this news Google News search here is I just did a quick search for South Park seafood and see where it pops up in news so what I would do here Dawn uh, is is I would actually go through every single one of these news stories and I would look at the story and and I would check the, and you can do it quickly in the source source code, actually. So I'll just pop into the source code it's faster. Um, and I'm going to see if they linked back to, you know, South Park Seafood, if, if it's my client, if I'm working for them. I'm going to see if they, did they hi, did they mention me? They mentioned South Park uh, Seafood, but did they link back to us? So let's see. Okay, so there is, looks like we do have a link here about line 999. So they do uh, have a link in this article. So then I would actually go back and I would put this, you know, I would put this in my back pocket um, and move on to the next news reference and just keep going, going, going until I find one of these that has a mention of South Park um, but no link. At that point, I, I'll reach to the author of the article or their editor and I would say, hey, um, thank you so much for mentioning South Park. Um, it'd be great if you could add a link into the article um, so that your readers can discover our, you know, what our site has to offer more quickly. You know, it's more convenient. Yada yada. And you kind of you kind of massage it however you want. 
But at that point, I would outreach and do manual outreach to that person and ask for the link. Um, and so, uh, so that's another form of link building that's um, outside of the other two that we discussed. So I don't know how. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That I was thinking that just as yeah, just as you pulled it up because um, it looks like a relatively new site, although it, it apparently isn't. Um, but they did revamp everything. It appears so, and that. I think that's like there's not a link in the first one. So yeah, there's, there's no link here. Yeah, that's actually, so there's a fresh mention. Right? There's one down at the bottom. Oh, there's a link there. So, so yeah, that yeah. is a fake out. Uh, yep. But we can. <laughs> but I just use. Uh, like, yeah. I, I just use it, and um, I just go straight to the source code and just do a right. quick search in there. Yeah. Um, Even if it's an older business, like sure. South South Park Seafood obviously is, but they just remodeled everything apparently and, and revamped their yeah. menu. So this is another great opportunity to look for, you know, newer articles that are mentioning it again and, um, you know, talking about it again and, you know, see, you know, see what's out there. So. Um, Matthew D. asks, can you go into tactics that local based businesses should use to acquire links? Um, yeah, I don't. I can't spend too much time on it, but this is one of them. Mm -hmm. So a local, so you can set. So a searcher in a searcher can set their um, settings in, in Google to you know for regional specific. But basically, if you're searching in Portland, if you're doing SEO for like a Portland client, um, then it's you know you'll get more Portland specific results. Uh, you know if it's if you're geotagged to that area. But anyway. Um, yeah, this is one way that uh, local news mentions in um, in Google News is a really good way to find these unlinked mentions. Um, I also highly recommend um, getting your getting your local business added to the um, basically the top ten um, best local directories for businesses. So I'm talking Google Business. So pull, you know, adding getting a link from Google Plus um, through Google Business Pages, um, Yahoo, Bing, um, Yellow Pages. Uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting a couple, but if you go to moz.com, if you go to moz and go to their moz local um, area, they'll tell it, it'll basically give you a rundown. Actually, page1power.com, we published a really great article recently about uh, local link building on our Linkarati blog. Um, that is that is all encompassing talking about that. So those are the, those are two things I would do um, right off the bat that are super easy for local links, um, but also. I think I'm a firm believer that once you kind of, you know, national links are okay too, and kind of getting something, getting, getting links from relevant blogs and relevant, um, relevant other watering holes, um, national, you know, regardless of where they're located, is is going to be very good, um, very good as well because um, a lot of people like I'm I'm already contemplating. <laughs> I usually have I usually make a trip to Portland once right, a year. Exactly. I'm already I don't I don't spend more than like a day or a year in Portland or two. Uh, and I'm already contemplating when I'm going to visit South Park Seafood and go eat there. <laughs> um, and so, so branch, branching out of that local uh, sphere and letting spreading the word to audiences far and wide, they, then they're going to start planning trips and visiting you. Right. People travel. So. Yeah. Um, excellent. Any last words on uh, South Park before we move on to uh, the last site? Good on land. You keep... Uh, using watering hole, and I noticed that someone asked you to. Can you define that for the audience? Oh, please? sorry, I didn't see that question. Thank you. Um, so, okay, so watering hole is basically like, okay, so if we have, um, if we have like, um, you know, a, a blog that is all about um, uh, mountain biking trips, and it's about like mountain biking adventure, trail riding, and mountain biking trips. So that's the blog. That blog would be a watering hole for people that are interested that in in that type of crowd or interested in that type of sport, and so they would go go there to that content because I call it a watering hole because a watering hole is a place where you go to frequently to gain, um, you know, basically to gain to get water to get nourishment. Is you go there frequently to you always return to the watering hole and you frequent that place. And so I, I try to think in terms of like, okay, um, I sell product X, um, so I, I sell I sell like coffee, and like naturally sourced um, naturally sourced fair trade coffee. Where is my audience? Where what types of articles are they reading? 
And so like with coffee, you know, if you're naturally, you know, fair trade, organic coffee, um, there's a lot of crossover between people that read like, you know, hiking and mountain mountaineering and outdoors blogs. So that would be a watering hole for my um, audience. Um, so yeah, so that's that's kind of what I think. So a watering hole could literally just be a, someone's website. Um, but I just try to think of who goes there, who visits that website. And I want to approach that audience for my client. Thank you. Um, so this other site, uh, so we have uh, the Virginia uh, Museum of Fine Arts. Um, again, I'm planning a, a trip to, to Virginia right now. This is great. Just uh, this, this is so much <laughs> cool stuff here on this site. Um, and uh, Shondell, I'll just I'll let you start us off with, uh, with this one. Okay, so the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts has done an amazing job on their website. The whole thing is chock full of interesting and valuable content assets um, from featured events or there's, you know, a jewelry exhibition. There's even their After Dark Jazz Cafe. Like, there's just so much content that could be built um, from various angles. Um, so you know, props to them. They did a really good job. Their blog pages are also great. Um, plus, I noticed uh, there's sort of different sections. If you go to the footer, um, they have different sections on their websites that are, you could create content for desirable audience segments, like kids and families, for example. You know, you could actually do a whole campaign with mommy bloggers like family day at the museum or something and be linking back to that page. Um, so I, I think there's a lot you could do with with this site. Um, like it would probably, like we could definitely talk about them for like three webinars in terms of content. But uh, I think also like lifestyle bloggers like do another influencer campaign talking about the value of art and culture and then including examples from various past and present exhibits would also be a great fit for building content for the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. Um, and then, and, and Shondell, can I, can I just, um, uh, I think for our audience, um, it is, can I put you on the spot really quickly to just, <laughs> you uh, elaborate up for us a little bit for what you mean by a, um, an influencer campaign, just so that we can kind of um, brighten that point a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, I think when I referred to it before, we, we talked a little bit about social media, and I think the term influencer gets associated most frequently with social media influencers. But for me, when I say influencer, yes, that could be part of it, but because I'm always trying to build content and, and link back to the client's website, I'm looking for influencers who have a blog or a website of some kind and hopefully also have a, a strong social media following so I can get some indirect signals from the promotion of their article afterwards. So when I'm saying either a lifestyle influencer campaign or a mommy blogger influencer campaign, I would go out and I would look for a number of qualified uh, websites in that sector and sort of plan out my campaign that quarter um, you know, depending on the client's budget, et cetera, et cetera. But targeting those mommy bloggers that I selected for the campaign with dedicated messaging um, about what the campaign's about. So, you know, we're the Virginia Museum of Arts, and we're trying to promote, um, you know, children's participation or incite their interest into the arts and cultural sector from a young age, and we'd love for you to be a part of it. Here's passes to the museum. If you want to write about it on your blog afterwards, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Or, um, you know, same thing for the for the food influencers going back to the other website. It, it, it's easy to say try out a recipe or to take the environmental angle and, and say I challenge you to cook sustainably using only sustainable products and write about the experience. Um, yeah, so when I say influencer, they have to have a blog, <laughs> in right. my opinion, for this purpose. Excellent. And I think that's uh, I think that's really important uh, distinction too. Yeah, exactly. I I I've uh, in my experience, I usually go with the social media route, but um, but an influencer can uh, you know uh, can come in many forms um, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, and I just want to um, so 
there's uh, someone in the in the uh, so Taylor a T from the chat or from the uh, or rather from the questions uh, is talking about um, uh, redirect issues with different versions of the site for the via for the VMFA museum. Um, good good call on that. Um, redirects I think are I, I think even to a, a lot of seasoned site owners. Um, can be a uh, can be kind of the tall grass for um, you know understanding how to take advantage of them and how to use them because if you redirect if you have a poor redirect scheme or you accidentally change one thing you can lose so much link equity which I think Taylor is, is kind of addressing here and, and and you can start to see your rankings um, change um, and then also people might it might be harder for them to find you because if they're clicking on an old link. Um, if they're clicking on an old link that's that may not be redirected properly, it it could just take them to a dead page, or it might not load properly um, as well. So, thank you, Taylor. That's a very that's a very important thing to kind of keep in mind as well. Um, and uh, yeah, and so looking at the so today for today's purposes, I wanted to get I I I think we we all agreed that we wanted to kind of stay uh, away from the technical SEO aspects. Um, and kind of talk about more like link building, um, and like tech, like a, a linkable assets, and kind of talking about link building uh, strategies and plans of attack. Um, but yeah, so uh, so Bradich asks about uh, does technical SEO have any effect on link building strategies? It definitely does. This, there's kind of that background influence there, especially like okay, well, if the linkable asset I have is on a page that is orphaned, right? So if it's if if the linkable asset is a really tremendous blog entry but there's no internal links <laughs> pointing to that then that's problematic or if it's not linking out to anywhere and it's basically just a silo huge huge problem right and so that's definitely some, exactly it's definitely something to, to be considered so there's there's tons and tons and tons and tons of technical SEO things to consider um, but I, I want to zoom out we're going to zoom out from those um, in we're zooming out from those in this kind of discussion but I love I love diving into technical SEO stuff as well. So um, VMFA, um, the, there's a lot of linkable things here that I think uh, that I think are really important um, that are constantly changing. So like the exhibitions, um, so I can link to these. So if I'm writing, if I'm guest blogging on like a travel article, uh, like at a travel site, I think it would be great. Travel art type sites, um, even food and fine dining. Um, sites you can link to a museum very handily um, because it's like well after dinner go check out this wonderful exhibit at the museum and learn more right um, so uh, so uh, this these types of the linking to these exhibits and saying like hey this is new in town this is a new exhibit here um, it is very is great fodder for for link building um, and same with the resources I love that word I love seeing that word on any yes. website yeah. the, the <laughs> That's holy grail, especially yeah. to a writer when it's you know something like a site like this. It's oh yay, you know the um, and then you can drill down. I um, you can drill down to like the gallery hunts. Mm. Um, oh yeah, back to go. I think back. Is that up? Yeah, these activities oh, yeah. here on the right, and you can um, they have like. It's basically a uh, scavenger hunt that you can do if you're there on site at the museum. So there's all kinds of things that you can write about for the from the educational perspective. You know, just a family fun night. You know, free top ten free dates in Richmond. You know, oh, yeah. things like that. So there's all kinds of great things that you could do. Um, you know, his history, art, music. It's, just pick one, you know. There's a lot of really good uh, like blossoms here, uh -huh. um, and uh, so we got a question, a couple questions here. So, uh, so from Sabrina, um, how about asking local businesses to link back? Absolutely, oh, definitely. especially with a huge influencer. Talking about influencers, I would say like a, a museum in a you know prominent museum in a in a city is it is in itself an influencer, and, and it opens up a lot of doors. If you say I'm working with them or I'm part of their Right. Their web team. Um, I would just pick up the phone. Honestly, I would get the. Uh, I would pull up the, the. I almost said phone book, but what is that anymore? Um, I still get them. Right. <laughs> uh, they make great. Uh, oh, they make great paperweights. Um, exactly. So, 
Um, right. So the I would I would just look on Google Maps probably and just a local vicinity around. Look at businesses around the this museum or my client um, and any client with a local presence. And I would actually just make a build a outreach list to everything within like a you know one square mile, two square miles out on. And um, I would outreach to to a lot of those businesses and say you know like hey you know hey you you know would you want to link to um, link to the, you know, the museum here, here's a way to do it. Here's some interesting content that you can put on your site and just kind of build relationships with those businesses and see how you can work with them in order to get a link. And I absolutely, I'm absolutely for it. Um, and it may not always turn into a link, but it's, it's worth at least building those relationships. Reach out to the local municipalities. If they're not linking to things like museums, they certainly should be. Mm -hmm. um, um, from Sabrina, follow-up question: Should we offer incentives? Um, I I'm not a huge fan. Um, I, I say I stay away from incentives, especially from uh, especially from a, a light, from this great site that already offers so many great, right. so much great free information and resources. Um, so what I would do is something like um, you can even say like, oh, is there a local pub nearby? Well, the local pub um, or you know local pub or seafood restaurant nearby, if they have a website, I would say you know what. I, how about I, you know, we can either do a kind of, a, uh, you know, quid pro quo or something like that. Um, you know, we can give some of your patrons like free tickets or whatnot, uh, you know, to one event or, or but, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of a temporary thing. What I really like to do is say that, uh, hey, here's what's going on. I can write up something on your website and I can give you this article. Um, and the, in this article, it'll link back to the museum. And then that's something that's like, I'll provide you this article and this write-up, uh, and that's kind of more of a permanent thing. So I, I definitely encourage that. Um, and just building those relationships. They might even just say, oh, I'll put a link on there right now. Yeah. <laughs> and, they, <laughs> and they'll just, you know, if you just ask for the link, asking for the link is, is kind of the first part of the conversation that I like to, uh, like to have. Um, even if businesses don't have a high DA link, I, I don't even look at the high, I don't even look at domain authority. I mean, uh, not in this case, absolutely not. I, the, the locality, the, 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 you know, the, you know, the geolocation, the, the, you know, um, the, what do you call it, the relevance, um, right. that trumps domain authority. I, I barely look at it. Um, you know, I, I, you know, DA is great for some things, but it's in this specific case, I would never, I wouldn't even consider it. Um, consider it for sure. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something to keep in mind uh, in other cases. Um, great. I don't know. Any other words on the on on this guy? Shundell, Canada, our, our Canadian uh, <laughs> correspondent. It's almost like a co co counterpart correspondent. <laughs> you guys, honestly, you had really great suggestions. Like, just adding to what Ad, uh, Hattie said, like, you could certainly approach the municipality, which would be a really strong backlink yes. to your site. And then you could even go state level with tourism resources if they have that page available, because this is such an authority in Virginia. Um, so those are certainly strong links. In terms of local partners, I absolutely agree with everything you're saying, Colin. I would just um, avoid people who have uh, blog roles or who are just linking to everyone in your neighborhood because they want you to come to them and pay them to add your site to. Like, avoid reciprocal linking or anyone who's just blog rolling mm. all through the site for the sake of that. Make sure it's just a, a, you know, an actual relevant business and, and for sure make that relationship either way. Yeah, yeah there's a great, so a couple quick questions here. One from Scott E. Um, does nearby help with local SEO? Example, reach out to businesses near your location. Suggest a link on their map page. So, uh, so yeah, as far especially since we just I just read that Google is switching to their mobile index and they're kind of favoring their mobile index over a, uh, their desktop index. And so the mobile is going to have that geo tag, that kind of geo specificity that's going to be a little bit more um, tailored to your mobile device than a desktop would. So. That's that's going to have some significance in the future. How much? I don't know, but I think it's a good thing to keep an eye on. Um, but but yes, I think any nearby local business, you get a link from them and their website. That's a win. Every single one is a huge win. Um, and to kind of to go into Blair's uh, Blair L's um, uh, question here, what if uh, what if they're not close to you uh, and relevant with very low DA? Um, if if they're not close to you, like 
in a different state or whatnot, um, then I would, you know, I kind of err on the side of more relevant, um, you know, like a type of site that would link to a museum would be like maybe a local business or an eatery, you know, that's, you know, it's like fun things to do in this town and I'm part of this town and I'm part of this culture and here's a link to the museum. That's another cool thing to do besides eat at my restaurant. Um, but somebody that's super far, far away geographically, like 30 to 40, 50, 100 miles, um, it, it kind of loses a little bit of that geographic significance. Um, again, and, you know, and DA, and domain authority, you know, domain authority, uh, who knows what, because it's not a Google metric, and so it's a Moz only metric, and so who knows what Google really thinks about, like, you know, we could have a 100 DA website, um, and it could be a complete black hat, you know, directory. And so, you know, not 100 DA, but maybe like 80, 88, 90 <laughs> DA, right? um, but, and so, and so DA, I, 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 that's kind of a, I push that out of my mind because it's it's something that can be tricked and it's not a Moz, it's not or it is a Moz thing. It's not a um, it's not a Google, it's not a, it's not part of the Google algorithm. Um, so excellent. Well, let's see. Yeah, Scott E. Yeah, says is chiming in with the uh, ADDA sites. Uh, very true. Uh, some can look very spammy too, or or some can be very legit, but but uh, but have low DA um, as well. So there's that. Um, so excellent question. So, okay, another question. So, uh, from Sabina J, um, how can one get local business to link back to something not so much fun, like a law firm? It depends on the co yeah. <laughs> well, Hattie kind of whisper. <laughs> Hattie, Hattie's like it depends on the content. Yeah. Um, so, so it here, does. <laughs> so for law law firms are tricky, but if a law firm had an article that talked about the law firm's place in the local community and how that they serve the, the residents and the people of this area and here's what they do and here's us interacting with like here's us sponsoring a little league team or here's us sponsoring a volleyball team um or the paralympics or, or here's anything how we're helping yeah defeat crime within yeah, our community exactly here's how yeah. we're volunteering our time so you know that the law firm is getting out there they're they're volunteering and helping and being charitable and they can market all those things site doesn't just look like every other corporate law firm yeah you're gonna get you can get local links it truly i mean it's you know feeding a dead horse but it depends on the content so it would have to be it would have to be a type of content that is a, a applicable to the community and shows that the law firm is um, integrated within that community yeah. and that people have some connection to it. Um, and I don't know, Shondell, anything anything to kind of add on that? Well, we're um, we're working with a, a law firm right now. It's going to go unnamed, obviously. But I, what we've done is tapped into the knowledge of their lawyers. Because you can almost borderline on legal advice with some of these articles that are really useful for the audience, but you want to tone it down. I mean, you don't want to right. say, you know, 10, 10 laws about divorce or something. But, like, we've talked a lot about the impact on children with divorce and separation agreements. And, that, and you know, it's actually been really useful content for people. We've talked about um, immigration on really high authority immigration sites and sort of procedures and resources that new immigrants can can use. Basically just really, really useful content. Right. The only practical. problem is it puts the sorry, what's that? Highly practical. Highly practical. Agreed. Yeah. The only challenge I find is it puts the onus on the client to deliver that value to you. Like I don't have a law degree. So I can put together an outline and say, here's the section I really, really need your legal advice for, or I can even put together something I think is right and they can check it, or they will write the content entirely themselves. Um, so sometimes there's a bit of a bottleneck there because they're obviously busy and have busy lives. Um, so I think what you guys were saying at first, the sponsorship example is, is a great idea too, especially because law can be a bit dry. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Very true. Um, well, that's we're gonna we're gonna kind of pivot into um, into kind of wrapping up here. I did want to address one thing. Again, I want to I want to say thank you so much for everybody uh, that did submit their site. I have one last thing from uh, Brian W. Um, he did. Uh, where is it? 
Where did I go? Okay. Uh, so Brian W. Regarding so, uh, regarding the South Park site, um, I did I, I did say a lot about the fish uh, the the fish picture there. Brian does say uh, and this. Also, thank you so much, Brian, for for participating and for um, uh, and for uh, playing. So you know, times. being a, a good sport with this, and and this is all from love. Um, so it says thank you guys for looking at South Park. It was great to get the emotional responses as well as the ideas. Uh, and just for interest, uh, that initial image is about to change to a nicer salmon. Uh, so there we go. So uh, I thought that was I thought that was a fun thing to kind of end on. Again, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Brian, and thank you everybody um, for listening and for tuning in today. Um, it has been an absolute pleasure. And there's some more questions that um, there's some more questions that uh, aren't that have not been addressed. We don't have time to get to those, unfortunately. Please um, e email them, send them to send them to me, send them to Patreon Power. We'll, I'd love to you know talk offline and kind of uh, and kind of keep the conversation going. So thank you so much, everybody. Uh, Colin, Hattie, and Shandal, uh, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate the audience for being with us, and uh, you know this webinar definitely was something new. Uh, and and it's ever evolving so we'd love to have your feedback um, feel free to give us feedback on Twitter um, email us directly on what you would like to see next month in a similar formatted webinar um, challenges that you're experiencing in in your SEO and content marketing and digital marketing efforts and we would love to get specific and uh, speak to the pain points that you're you're dealing with on a daily basis, and uh, just relate to the community at whole. But uh, um, like we saw on the previous um, slide, join us next week. Um, we're going to be talking technical SEO uh, with Tom Anthony from Distilled, Paul Shapiro from Catalyst, Patrick Stocks is from IBM, and our own Nicholas Chimonis, uh panel discussion about technical SEO. Uh, they're going to get into those nitty-gritty uh, behind-the-scenes details. So we'll see you uh, next Wednesday. It's a little earlier because Tom is in England, so we got to start that quite early, but uh, hopefully you can join us then. But until uh, then, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>